so yeah, so actually I, I want to talk about well recently I've been doing a lot more dynamics than topology and geometry, but I thought I'd talk about some topology and geometry because of the conference. The conference is a little biased towards towards dynamics. Um, but also I thought I thought this actually this topic might actually be sort of sort of jointly interesting to, to everybody. Um, so so what I want to do today is I want to try to put a topology or describe how to put a topology on the space of all translation surfaces, which which is a huge space. But actually, yeah, actually I don't think there's really that much to worry about, and I think it's actually sort of beneficial to realize that there's, there's something you can do. And I think, actually, the, the stuff I'm going to say, I don't find particularly deep. I think it's sort of, you know, I think it's actually sort of like a natural thing to do. And so I'm, I sort of expect it to probably be useful to people. And the thing I'm doing is actually, I have plans, I have things that are useful for me. So it's sort of a selfish thing I'm interested in. But then I thought maybe other people would also benefit. So, so we've had sort of a lot of motivation for this actually from various talks, but I thought I would actually give you a small amount of motivation at the beginning of the talk. Um, so the motivation is, so there's a limit you can construct of, of translation services from features regular and gods. So, so I like the double end guy. So you take this, so I'm not going to really talk to you too much about how beautiful these surfaces are, but they're, they're totally amazing surfaces. And so, so they have, in particular, so what you do is you take two copies of a regular n-gon and you glue them together like this, so in pairs. And then they have these, well, the, the most beautiful thing is that they have this large symmetry group. So, so, this, the, so locally, so this is a translation service which we've been talking a, a lot about. So locally, each point in the surface has, has a neighborhood that looks like a plane. And you pull back the sort of translation structure from the plane. Um, but you could also relax this structure and sort of pull back just sort of the affine structure. And, and it turns out that this, these surfaces have a lot of, if you just think of them as a job with an affine structure, they have a lot of extra symmetries. And, and this is sort of what's really beautiful about these surfaces. Um, so I actually probably don't, so if you haven't seen this before, it's really beautiful, but I'm not going to tell you about it here. But I'll just, just take my word for it if you don't, that these surfaces are amazing. Um, so, right, so what, what I want to do today is, first is just, as my example, I want to take a limit of these things. Um, so how would I take a limit? Well. The first idea is I just want to normalize three of the vertices of these polygons. So right, the affine, so I'm going to normalize them by an affine transformation. And the affine transformation group of the plane, you can take any three non-collinear points to any other non-three collinear points. And so in particular, I'm going to take like these three, three adjacent vertices in my polygon to, to the points zero, the origin, and then I guess one, one, and minus one, one. Um, these are my favorite points, and we'll see why in a bit. Um, so you could do this for, for any of these, any of each polygon, right? So I have this infinite list for every n, I can, I can build these, these surfaces, and I can always do this. And now I want to explain that you can take a limit. So, yeah, so here's, the, here's the picture I just had for the, the five guy. And for the octagon, you get something that looks like this. And, okay, so, so in what sense, actually, actually what the, so in what sense am I taking a limit here? So I've actually written a paper on, on this. And the sense in which I take a, a limit is sort of, it's very sort of naive. Which, what you look at is, so, so, so these, these three points all converge somehow. Right? We sort of set it up to be, so they're always in the same place. So then you can look at the next edge. And as you vary, as you increase n, these things, this, 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 I guess this third edge will, will sort of, will move in some way. Well, it turns out that third edge converges. And the thing it converges to, Turns out the next point turns out to be the point two four, and then you can repeat this whole process for the next edge along. You, know, you go up and you look at the, where they go, and it, it also converges. And so the, the, this, these polygons, in some sense, are, are converging to to the the convex hull of a set of points n n squared. So I, I call this thing like a polygonal parabola. So the limit is some sort of polygonal parabola. So I, this is sort of a standard picture. You take right. You can, you can have a sequence of ellipses, which these things are all polygons are inscribing ellipses, and the ellipses are converging to the, to the, to the parabola. Um, so what's sort of nice about this, if you know, well, if you know some of my work, which not all of you do, um, so the, the symmetry groups, these, these affine symmetry groups I mentioned, of these surfaces also converge. And so, so these surfaces have this beautiful property called the lattice property, and this limiting surface also does. So, so for those of you who know what this means but don't know my work, this, this, this parabola surface has, 
as a beach group, which is the congruence two subgroup of, of SL2Z. So, so it has all these symmetries. And yeah, so, so that's one thing you can hope to get from these limits. Um, other things you can hope to get from these limits are, well, I'm sort of interested in, in periodic orbits and things, and counting them or looking at that. And you can also get that from this. Sorry. So, so but really what I want to talk about is sort of step back from, so, so once you have this limit, you can say, well, what properties do you get? But I want to step back and say, so here's the, here's the question I'm sort of addressing in this talk. Okay, so, right, so in what sense does, do these surfaces, actually, I should note, I'm always using pointed surfaces. Um, maybe I can say a little bit of why. Yeah, so what surface do these, in what sense do these pointed surfaces converge to, to this limit surface? So that's the main thing I want to address today. Um, yeah. So yeah. So the so the goal here is to put. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're going to put a put a nice topology on the space of all translations.
so, so, right, so this is the thing I want to put my, my topology on. It's the, it's the sort of, it's the set of all translation surfaces, point translation surfaces. So you just union over all topological types of surfaces of all, the, of all these moduli spaces, and that's the thing I want to put, put a structure on. So I think, actually, so, so, so right now, I'm trying to give you sort of an overview of what I'm, what I'm going to do. So, so this thing, actually, this space, actually, I don't, this is totally, this is completely the wrong way to think about this space. So, I mean, if you write like this, you, c you can't really imagine that you could pass from, like, from, from one, in, you know, one finite genus to infinite genus. Yeah. Right, so, so this is the union over everything that exists that could be a surface? All, to all topological surfaces. So this should be, like, you know, topological equivalence classes. I mean, I'm being sort of sloppy. Okay. Um, Right, so I said this is the wrong way to think about it, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's equivalent, it, it, this, as I said, it's sort of equivalent to this other thing. Okay, so, so here's the right way to think about it. So, so if you have a translation surface structure, oh, I should have mentioned, right, so in the compact case, you can have cone singularities. If you, if you, read my def, if you digested my definition, I threw them out. So, so I don't have any singularities in my surface. Um, so, so if you have your translation surface, then structure on, on some surface, you could lift the, that structure to the universal cover, and you get some sort of translation structure on, on the disk. Right? So the only possible thing that can support, simply connected thing that can support uh, a translation structure is the disk. Um, wait, wait, what? What? What about the plane? The, the, home, up to homeomorphism. Oh, OK. Yeah. So topological. Um, so, Okay, so, so then you can associate this translation structure on the disk plus the action of the deck group. And the action of the deck group is just acting by translation on the so it's local translations of your structure. Um, so then, right, so then really like a surface you associate to the, you know, the structure on the universal cover together with the, with the deck group action. And then, yeah, so, so then, yeah, so then, yeah, so how would you, so the idea is, right, I want to specify a topology, I guess in this case, probably easiest to think about in terms of like when should a sequence of surfaces limit on another surface. Um, so what you do, you start with a sequence of translation surfaces and you want to know, do, do they converge to some infinite surface, or some, some, some limit? Then what you do is you, right, you, do this, you do this for everything, you just lift it to the universal cover, you look at the deck groups. And then the basic plan is, is you, you, wanna, you want the structures on the, on the disk, on the universal covers to converge. And then you also, want the, the group, the deck group to converge. That's the service after this is converging. If you know this converges, you want the deck group to converge. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea here, actually I don't think, nothing here is particularly deep actually, I don't think. Um, so the idea here is, is, is some, there's some standard thing in hyperbolic geometry that the thing you would do is you might just look at, um, right, you might look at, you might, instead of looking at surfaces, you might look at representations into, into the isometry group with H2. And then, and then you might, then for convergence of groups, there's just some canonical sort of geometric limit. So this is some sort of, you know, modification of that idea. Yeah. Have you lost the uh, geometric information? You're no. Like no, so you lift, yeah, so this, right, so these guys, actually, right. Right, so these guys, when I lift the universal cover, they're actually, they have a translation structure. But you're lifting the, and then you're doing homomorphism. <laughs> What do you mean this question? Oh, this, this homeomorph. What do you mean the, the homeomorphism of the quotient by when I make modulus modulus space? No, no. So you lift the universal cover whatever that is. You're saying that that's homeomorphic to the disk, right? And now you're looking at the disk. Yeah. Looking at maps on the disk. Yeah. Right. And so I have, I have a, well, so I have a translation structure downstairs, which is this local charge to the plane, whose mm -hmm. um, you know, the cost is translation structure. Yeah. 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 So that's the plane. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you know, hopefully they can do both. Um, okay. Okay, so that's all I wanted to do with the slides. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Is, so two doesn't encompass one in some sense? No, well, so I, the way I think, I'll explain how I think of it. I mean, you'll see how I think of it, but, but I sort of need one to make, have two make sense. Um, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. You guys have any questions? I guess before I close my. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so now, so now comes like, I guess sort of the, sort of the fun part, right? So, so I want to look at translation. So, so the motivation there, remember in, some, in statement one there, I want to look at sort of translation structures on the disk. It's a, right, and it's a pointed disk. So, yeah, so how can you think of translation structures on the disk? Right, you have this atlas of charts to the plane. Well, the disk is simply connected, and there's this canonical construction called the developing map. And so you can, you can just integrate, right, so you have these, these pieces, you can just integrate the structure sort of analytically continue to develop the structure. So, so it turns out a translation structure on the disk is the same as something sort of slightly simpler. So, so Ts of, of delta is my set of translation structures. And, and this thing, so you can think of it as the collection of all local homeomorphisms. Say, say phi. From, from the disk to the plane. And, and these are pointed, right? So translate, post composing this translation has no effect on the structure. So these are the things are pointed, so you might as well take um, with um, the base point could be sent to, to the R. So, right, so this is the thing you get by, by analytic continuation of the structure. Um, so it's, so it's really just, I guess in other words, it's just an immersion of the disk into the plane. So, so that's the space of all translation structures on the disk. So yeah. again, no singularities? Yeah, no singularities. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, right. So then, right, so this is actually the equivalent of specifying an atlas of charts. So if you want sort of the modulized space of all translation surfaces, you have to sort of quotient by sort of, by sort of relabeling by, by Ways of coordinating the thing. So, so this is so. So there's a there's a homeom plus there's an action of the homeomorphism orientation preserving homeomorphism group of, of the disk. Um, so this thing. So this homeom plus delta is, is a set of homeomorphisms of the disk which preserve the base point. So this thing this thing acts on um, well. Actually, let me give this another name. Clear. So these are translation structures, and, and basically, it's equivalent to looking at these local homeomorphisms. So I'm calling these, I'm going to call these local homeomorphisms pointed local homeomorphisms. So they're this base point. So we can just call this pointed, yeah, pointed local homeomorphisms. So, so, so this homeom plus delta acts on on these pointed local homeomorphisms, and and the action is if you have some some homeomorphism H, and you want to Act on some pointed local homeomorphism B, then it's just you just you just precompose H inverse. Right, so this is just a change of coordinates. Um, so so my moduli space, so the moduli space of all translation structures on on the disk should be this PLH modulo this, this homeo plus action. That, that's the modular space. Um, so, okay. So one thing I, I detest, which maybe I can convince you to also to test, it's, it's these equivalence relations. So we're going to try to get rid of these equivalence relations just to make our notation. Um, so. Right, so points in modular space are really equivalence classes of pointed local homeomorphisms. And, and so let me explain the idea. So, 
so there's, there's actually there's some so there's a canonical so whatever you have sort of a moduli space there's a canonical surface bundle sitting over it or whatever your parameter is there's a canonical disk bundle um, right, so this is a little bit of abstraction but it's actually not that hard if you get through it you'll be fine for this at the top there's a canonical disk bundle um, which I'm calling yeah script E over over moduli space. So, okay, so what is this thing? You right. So the, the point is that the homeo plus there's, a, there's also a, a homeo plus action. So there's, there's an action on modulus. I'm sorry, on pointed local homeomorphisms across the disk. And, and this action, this action is just given by right. So if you if you have your pointed local homeomorphism. And you have a point on the disk, then what you do is you, you you act the same way on the pointed local homeomorphism, and then you you act on the point in the obvious way. So that that's the that's the action of homeo plus on, on this product space. And this, this canonical bundle this is the quotient. So it's this so it's PLH across the disk. Modulo, modulo is coming. It's coming more. Yeah. Right. So, so this is just like what people call the universe of family over. Yeah, maybe it's, is that what it's called? So, it's okay. Yeah, this is over modulo space, right? This, yes, maybe this is universal family. Um, so it's like mg and or each point you put the object. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is exactly what's going on. So, yeah, let me explain why. So, so in this case, I'm parameterizing disks. So above. Above every point in moduli space, I should have a copy of the disk. And so, yeah, so let me explain. Yeah, how do you see that above this you have the disk? Well, well, first of all, you have to have, I have to define the projection. There's this projection from, um, let me just call it, okay, from the bundle. Actually, let me just abbreviate for time's sake. Okay, so, yeah, so I have the, the bundle and I can project it on the moduli space. And, and what's this projection? It just takes, right, you take an equivalence class of dy. And, it, and you map it to just the equivalence class of phi. Right, so, that's, so that's the projection. And then, I want, then I'm interested in, in these fibers. Um, actually, yeah, so the fibers have a fair amount of structure. Yeah, so what's really amazing about this is like the, the fibers just get all the structure of the associated translation surface, basically. That's, the, that's what's nice about this. So, okay, so let's, so let's see. So, so in fact, I, I want to promote that these objects. So, Let's just give them a name. So, so a fiber of, of pi is what we we'll call it. I'll just call it a planar surface. So it looks like so. So p will be on planar surface, and and you just take the right. So it's something like this, just the preimage of a point. And and so I want to justify why this is a surface. First of all, so so why is it a surface? So if you, so oh well, one other thing is, so I forgot to mention this. So, so this is actually a pointed surface. Okay, right, so the base point is maybe this is not the most important point, but so so the base point I can call say little o p, just by the base point, is. and this is is really the point um, phi x naught, where x naught is the base point of my. So you can see that you have to check that this, you know, this definition is invariant of the choice of the choice of phi. Um, well, the action, the action, sorry, under the action of homeo plus. Um, okay, so why is this thing a surface? Why do I call it planar surface? Well, really, it's a topological disk. So there's a right. So there's a so if you pick a if you pick a, a representative from, from the equivalence class of phi, then, then this gives you a canonical identification between the disk and the and, and, the, and the, this fiber. So the, the, this is the map. Um, so you get a map. Uh, well, well, really, it's just a bijection. This is the thing you should check. It's a bijection. Uh, maybe a, I'll call it gamma, gamma phi, from the disk to the um, to the fiber. And and this thing is give, just given by you, you take your point and you do the obvious thing. You map it to to phi y. 
So, so the point is that this map, just by construction, sort of hits everything. And, and furthermore, right, so, you're, so, you, so the planar surface is bijectively equivalent to the disk. And then furthermore, you can, so you can take this the topological structure in the disk and push it forward onto the fiber. And then there's, then there's some, something you have to check that the topological structure you get by pushing forward is the same if you chose a different, chose a different phi. But, but it is. So you get this topological structure on the disk. Um, and so the, these fibers are topologically equivalent to the, to the, to the disk. And then, okay, so that's, that's a lot of the, so, so we, we've given it the, the fibers, the topological structure of the disk. But we also had a translation structure associated with the fiber, and you can also get that. Um, so, so, yeah, maybe I should, well, I'll try to, can you guys see it right here? Um, so, so I call this thing like the, let's see, the, the, maybe the, yeah, so I guess I call this thing the bundle, it's, these things have probably all been visited again and again, um, but I, I call this thing the, the bundle-wide developing map. So, so the develop, this bundle-wide developing map, it's some, it's, it's some map from, from the bundle, to R2, and it's actually sort of the obvious, again, you sort of do the obvious thing. So you take a, so a point in the bundle is a pair of phi, a equivalence class of pairs phi y, and you, you map it to phi of y. And the point here is that the, right, so, right, so you have to prove that this map is invariant to the choice of, of your representative, but then if you, if you chose a different representative, there'd be this homeomorphism h, and the, the H inverse and the H will cancel, so the maps are the same. Mm -hmm. So that's the bundle wide developing map. And I think of this thing, so you could, you could take this developing map and, and restrict it to a particular planar surface, and, and that thing is now, you know, just has all the structure of your, of your translation service structure on the disk. So the, this developing map gives you the translation service. So, okay. Um, okay. Um, right. So, so I have some silly conventions, which are going to make our lives a little easier. Um, so, so really, right. So remember, our our moduli space is like these equivalence classes of pointed local homeomorphisms. But then you can identify each one with the five. So, so if you have a, so a planar, so I'll think of a planar surface, which is the fiber. P, you can think of as also, these planar surfaces are also parameterized by the moduli space. And so you can think of, you can think of this planar surface as just living in this moduli space. Because there's a bijection between them. Right, this is just convention. So the, in the bundle, so the, the bundle, you can think of, you can think of it as a set of all choices of a, a planar surface, P, together with a point P where, where P is in the planar surface. So P is the, P's also the fiber, and your, your little point P is just a point inside that. Mm -hmm. so, that so, this is, so actually, this is redundant. This is redundant information, but it's useful to think about. Because whenever you want to think about a point in the, in, the, in, the, in the bundle, you're also going to want to think about the fiber that it lies in. So it's sort of redundant, because, because you, you'll notice that, um, that if you project the point on the bundle down to the base space, you should get back to the point that turns the fiber. But this is like a useful way to think about it. Um, so that's just convention. Um, so, so what I, but these conventions is, you know, get rid of, I never have to think about pointed level homeomorphisms again. That's the, sort of the, the plus. Um, so, okay, so now, so now I think we can get to putting in topology on these spaces. So, so there's, there's sort of one idea, and, and this idea is, is embedded. I'm, I'm going to talk about like, how you can embed a subset of, of one planar surface into another planar surface. So, so what you do is, okay, so, so let's, let's let P and Q be planar surfaces, these are fibers. And, and let's pick, let's let let A and B be subsets of those fibers, planar surfaces. 
And, and I want some conditions on them. So let's, let's assume that, that the base points lie there. So my base point, so OP is my base point for P. So that should be in A. Um, and then OQ should lie in D. And also, um, the other thing I want is an A and B are path connected. Assume blah, blah, blah. Um, so I want them to be path connected. So, okay. So, so here's the definition. So, so we say A embeds in B, and this is an important idea, so I'll write it like this, A embeds in B. And if, well, if there exists an embedder, so if there exists a map E from A to B, so that um, well, there's two conditions. So, so one is that the embedding should respect the base point. And, and the other is, it should commute with the developing map. So, so the idea is, you, you take E and apply it to A, and then you want to, then, then it's sitting inside of B, and you want to evaluate the developing map, which is actually bundle-wise, I can just say dev here. But for clarity, you should think of this as the developing map for the surface Q. And that should be the same as, as applying the developing map restricted to P at A. And that should be true for, for all A and A. Okay, so that's a sort of abstract definition. Let me try to give you, it's not that abstract, but let me try to give you a feeling for how it works. Um, So, right, so these translation services are really disks just in, immersed in the, in the plane. So, so my set A, for instance, could be, um, could look like this. Maybe with my, my base point, um, OP, sitting here. Maybe, so this could occur, for instance, so this, this thing is supposed to be a subset of some translation surface. And the subset it could be is, well, maybe you, you could take some branch cover over some point in the interior of this region, and then this, this is just a subset of it. Branch cover. So then, right, so then you could ask the question when does this set A embed in, say, a planar surface? Well, well so for example, right, so it embeds in this branch cover because it, it just took it as a subset. Um, and it would, and, you know, if you take any branch cover over a point of the interior, it would still embed. But then it, it does not embed in the plane, in the translation surface associated with the plane. And it wouldn't also, it wouldn't embed in some, so a small disk in the plane would also be a, would also be a planar surface. And it doesn't embed there either. Small disk. Actually, it won't embed in any subset of the plane. But, okay, so, anyway, this, yeah. So you guys get the feeling how this works? So, so really, it's gotta, you gotta have a map from here, so the reason why this doesn't work is if you have a plane, and your plane is, your plane is just the, here, you've got to be able to take this, this, this the map, which sends OP to the base point here. And then you've got to, and then because of this developing map condition, it's got to be sort of a local, locally, you've got to respect the translation structure from the plane. So it's got to, you know, it's got to look exactly the way it looks in my picture. And it looks like, well, yeah. okay. it doesn't quite look the same. <laughs> okay, so, so you've got to stick it in there. That's a terrible picture. Yeah. Um, so you've got to stick it in there by, by respecting the translation structure. There's only one way to do this. And, and so it just, and so in fact, there's only one way to immerse it in the plane, respecting, respecting this condition. And you can see it's not in the bed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, the, so here's a, so here's a, right, so the important thing to take from that is the remark that, um, yeah, just, yeah, so if, if you have this in bed, so if E exists, it is unique. And this is somehow, yeah, so, so uniqueness is somehow the, the way this whole thing works. That's sort of the most important thing. Um, okay, so now we're ready, yeah, so now we're ready to find the polygon. Okay, Yes, 
so what's the, so I want to give you a, a topology on, on the moduli space. Um, so before I, I guess before I do, I have one definition. So here's a definition. So if Q is a planar surface, Then, so, so disk bar Q, it's a set of closed disks in Q. So if it's a set of, I don't know, it's a set of all K sitting inside of Q, like this fiber, think of a sub subset of the translation surface, that, that K should be is homeomorphic to a closed disk. And, and there's one more condition. Um, and the base point, so OQ is the base point of that surface. So the base point should lie in the interior of K. So it's just, so these are like particularly nice subsets of, of these planar surfaces. And so, so what's our topology? So, okay, okay, so, so, so let's fix Q like, like above, and let's, and, and and let's fix a, a K inside of a set of closed disks of Q. And, and then you can define two subsets of moduli space using this embedding idea. So, so one is, a, say, script N, script N plus of um, K should be the, it's the set of all planar surfaces P right, in this moduli space such that K embeds it. So that's one subset. So you can stick it in and it's in this open it's in the set. This is going to be an open set for us. Um, so this is just measuring you know, when can I stick this compact set inside of this other planar surface by embedding. Um, so this so this is actually not good enough um, to, for our topology. And the reason is we want our topology to be housed to so we have limits. And in particular Right, so as I mentioned, I think a, a, just a small disk in the plane, to the base point, is, is a planar surface. And the whole plane is another planar surface. And, and the fact is that if you can embed a compact set inside of here, then you can also embed it inside of here. So, so this, this, set, set, this topology, if you want to generate topology in this way, this, these are just the open sets, it doesn't separate points. So you need something else. So the other thing is, so the plus here is this is sort of like a positive version of embedding. And, and n minus of k, well, it's a set of all, so to make it really look like a closed set, you do something a little funny. It's a set of all p so that the interior of k does not embed in p. So, okay, so, so these things, right, so, so our topology, Yeah, so our topology is, yeah, so, yeah, so the embedding, I call this the embedding topology. Embedding topology on, on this module space is the one that it generated by, yeah, sets of the form. Separate. 
So what you do is, so the idea is you take one and you sort of exhaust it by these, these sets k. And then, and then somehow, right, so, it, and then if each one of these things embeds inside of q, let's say the interiors of this disk embed inside of q, then you can embed the whole space p inside of q. This is by this uniqueness of the bed, so you can pass to a limit. And con so, so conversely, you, have this, you do the same argument. And so you see, if these two surfaces are actually different, then there's one disk, k inside of one, whose interior is not embedded inside the other. And, and if you read through this, you pick that k, and then these, these two things separate the two points. So it's like, yeah, so it's just like definition, basically, that this space is housed over. Um, okay. Is everybody with me? Okay. So, yeah, so, so, okay. Right, so, so now if you remember our outline, the next thing we need to do, need to do is I need to tell you how to, how to apologize to some of the, the deck group actions. So first what you should do is, well, actually, so in order to do that, the first thing you should do is you should put a topology on, on the bundle. Um, so, so I also call this the, the embedding topology. And the, the thing you want somehow is, right, so there's, there's really two conditions that you use to define the topology. Is, so you want this projection, right, from so this, you want the, the projection should be continuous. And, and the, other, the other thing you want, actually maybe I don't have room. Um, right, so, so, so this topology on the bundle, should be, it should be the course, I guess you said this is the course of topology, so that this map is continuous. And I also want some other sets to be open. So, so what are those sets? The idea is, so, you, so, let's, so what are those sets? Um, so you, you pick up, you pick up Q of planar surface, and, and pick K a, a closed disk, and and also pick U inside of K should be open. So, so you have this, you have this closed disk. And you have this open set. And the idea is, OK, so on the, on the bundle, so I'm going to find a subset of the bundle, which is, which is KU. And so I wanted to find a subset of the bundle. And I said you can think of the bundle as you fix a planar surface and pick, fix a point in it. And so when is, right, so when is this guy going to be inside my open set? Well, I should be able to embed K inside of P, so that yeah, there exists embedding E of K into P. And, and it should also be that, um, so, so U, U is a subset of K, so I can apply it. And, and, and the image inside of the planar surface should contain our point P. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, maybe I should, yeah, should I draw a picture? I mean, yeah, so I guess the, the picture, you guys see, right, so the picture is you have this K, and you have this U, and, and once you have this, if you, if when you stick this inside of your planar surface, with a, with a choice of a point, if that point happens to lie inside of your, the image of U, then you're happy. So in particular, I guess you can see that the, that the topology induced by this, by this, this choice, this is of course this topology that makes these things true, is the same as the disk topology on the fiber. So that you induce back the disk topology on the fiber. Um, so, I don't know, so it, it's sort of clear, I don't know, if you think about it, that this, this topology is housed on. Um, because it's housed up on the base and on the fiber, it was already housed up on the fiber. Um, okay. Who's hanging on? Okay. Um, wait. Okay, so, so now, okay, so this is, 
Yeah, so this is the topology on the, on the bundle. And I, maybe I'll just quickly explain how you can use this you know, in the last like, minute, how you can use this to put topology in the space of all translation surfaces. So, right, so, so if you have a, so I have a, I, I like to give it in terms of sequences. If you have some translation surfaces, which I want to compare to the limit, you know, do, they, do they limit on this thing, on this, this other translation surface? And then the idea is, right, so they, they, should, they should limit, this is the idea from the, the slides, they should limit if, if when you, 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 you lift to the, to the disk, the translation structure on the disk, and then you look at the deck group action, that should limit. Yeah, you should be. My question is about yeah. 
take a, a sequence, three sequence of rational numbers, uh, converting to irrational numbers, like a triangle convert, uh, rational triangles converting to to an irrational triangle, right? Oh uh, yeah. So so if for each rational triangle you have this surface, which is the unfolding surface, right? Uh, and so do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, <laughs> So, mm -hmm. so the question is if, it's, if you have convergence in the limit in your sense in this, in this situation. Um, I'd have to think about it, but I think it should be true. So the, the question is like... Like you have this sequence of, of surfaces. <laughs> yeah, actually, I should say like like the thing, which I haven't quite finished, which I, I want to be able to do, is, is if you have, which is sort of similar idea, if you have some surface, sequence of surfaces and are triangulated, and say all the all the homonomies of salad connections are sort of moving are moving continuously or like are converging, then the and they're converging to something reasonable, then the, then the, then the, you should be converging in a sense. And vice versa. And so I would think that this is the same thing. But then there's also a question in your case being you know, these rational things if if actually, you know, the the points that are equivalent to the base point are are actually sort of getting further and further away, leaving every compact set. Which I would guess they are, but I have to actually think about. So, yeah. Just yeah. the second last question. These diamonds are the beach shoes, right? No, this is, uh, these, are, these are translational homomorphisms. This is the, the decor. Um, they acting by translational homomorphisms. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's not a beach group. Yes, it's preserving translation stuff. Yeah. yeah, so about the beach groups, can you say anything about the beach groups? Beach groups? Well, I mean, the first Okay, so, so beach groups, so beach groups, you, beach groups you would have trouble with. And the reason is, Okay, but let me ask you a question for affine homomorphisms, which is a slightly different question. So, so right, so, so if you have a sequence, you, what you can prove is if you have a, a sequence of surfaces which are converging, and and you have a sequence of and inside each one of these surfaces, you have some affine homomorphism, and and then you could look at the place where this affine homomorphism sends your base point. So if this also converges. Then, mm. then the thing will, then you'll, then you'll have this affine homomorphism on that surface. Makes sense. So, so somehow, right? You, the one thing you have to worry about is that base point. You know, sort of the where you send the send. So somehow, this is our base point is what we care about. We're sort of focusing on. We might just move off to infinity. Right. Yeah, but that's bad. But can you get something like lower semi continuity in general? Choose your base points correctly. Look, oh, I was. What do you What do you mean, lower? I mean, you don't lose. You can lose elements. Oh, I see. But you can't maybe gain them. Oh no, I think damn too. Yeah. I mean, your examples. But right, right, actually, this is this is. I think the space should be the same as, as moduli space. Is, you know, you should have a copy of like yeah. finite moduli space in there, and so you can pick up each group out of moduli space. In your example in the beginning, or Joshua's example, you sort of um, don't lose anything. Right? Um. You, you got gamma of two as the limit in the example. Oh yeah, in that case, oh yeah, the base point doesn't move very far. Yeah, so in that case, it will work. So, so you said you should have copies of, of a sort of finite dimensional moduli space. Yeah. 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 So you right. So, so that, right. So if you have a finite dimensional moduli space, the way you get a, 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 one of these things is you right, you remove the base points, or remove the singularities, and you have a sort of translation structure. And you can just, so when you deform and look at orbits in moduli spaces, it's the same as looking at orbits in yeah. this bigger space. Yeah, right. I guess there's this base point. I guess I forgot there is this base point. So, yeah. If you. Okay. Yeah. So, did you guys try to That's your job. <laughs> 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 we have announcements after this, we'll, we'll thank our speaker. We'll